is read by Roa. And a pea. Once upon a time, there lived a young prince. He went to marry a princess. His palace was to him to get married too, but he was very picky. He met many princesses. However, he didn't like any of them. <clears throat> he always found something wrong with them. They were entered to this or to that. She is too smart. She is too shy. She is too loud. The prince would keep complaining. No one of the princess pleased him. The king and queen were very worried. They were afraid the prince would never marry. The king frustrated and said to him. One day, my son, <coughs> this cannot go on. You really must marry soon. I am going here for the grand bell. I will invite all the princesses from neighboring kingdom. I'm sure they will like one of them. For several days, the palace was busy with activity. Everyone was preparing for a big party. The servant proceeds the clean horses and cleaned the palace until they sparkled. The cook made a delicious fast, and the musicians practiced their music for the bar. <coughs> Finally, the evening of the grand bell came. The guests began to arrive in handsome carriages. They were all dressed in their finest clothes. The princess put their most beautiful dresses. They are made from silk and velvet. With gold and silver thing. <clears throat> the princess covered themselves in rich jars. To want to anyone else, they all looked wonderful. But prince stood alone in the corner. He just frowned at the cloud. The queen was watching the prince all night long. She became angrier and said, "You must make an effort, my son. Ask one of your princesses to dance with you." The prince didn't want to upset his mother, so she started to dance with the princess. Each time the <coughs> prince changed her partners. The queen whispered to him, "So what about this one?" But the prince wasn't pleased with any one of them. He would answer, "Too tall, too small, too talkative, too quiet, too ugly, too vain, too thin, too fat." The princess and the pea. Once upon a soon the clock struck midnight, and it was time for the bed to end. The guests start to leave one by one. The king and queen were very upset. The prince didn't like any of the princesses. He couldn't find anyone he wanted to marry. The king didn't understand. Why the prince was so picky? He asked, "Did didn't you like even one of them?" I thought several of the princesses princess were very lovely. Princesses were very lovely. Lovely. The prince just shook his head. He was quite depressed, and both the king and queen were ready to give up. Meanwhile, 
In the kingdom far away, another battle was just in the air. The guests were leaving, and a princess was falling in a corner because her pa- parents were scolding her. You won't dance, and you won't look any of the princesses," cried the king. "You are so picky that I'm afraid you will never." Get married, but the princess said the prince were all too tall or too short, too fat or too thin, too vain or too ugly. I won't marry any one of them. The king and queen were very upset. They wanted their daughter to be happy, but they also wanted her to be married. Suddenly, the princess said. Maybe the husband for me lives in another country. Let me go and visit some faraway kingdom. I beg you. At first, the king and queen refused. It would be too dangerous for a young queen and beautiful princess to travel alone, and they could not go with her. But their daughter was noble. She wouldn't stop begging, so they actually gave in. A few days later, the princess left the palace to look for her prince. She wasn't alone, though. She was escorted by armed guards. They traveled through many kingdoms. The princess was welcome at every palace. She met many princes. She met many princes, but she didn't want to marry any any of them. Any of them. She just could find her perfect prince. The princess didn't want to disappoint their, her parents, so she kept. Kept on looking. One night, the princess and her daughters were passing through a dark forest, and suddenly the band of robbers appeared. They attacked the travelers. They captured all the girls and stole their baggage and gold. The princess ran and hid behind the tree. The robbers searched for her for hours. But finally gave up. Luckily, she managed to escape. But now the princess was lost and alone in the dark woods. She walked for hours. She tore her clothes and branches and lost her shoes in the mud. The princess was about to also hope. Then at last she saw a castle in the distance. She began to run toward it. Suddenly there was a terrible crash of thunder. Rain began to pour down. By the time the princess reaches the castle, she was soaking wet. The princess knocked on the door of the castle. The castle was the home of the picky young prince. The servants opened the door. They were surprised to see a dirty red woman standing at the door. "Thank me, your master," commanded the princess. She looked a mess, but the young woman manner was very proud, and her voice was clear and noble. Instead of closing in the door in her, on her, they led her in and cared for their master. The king and queen were shocked to see such a very. Thirteen creature, but the princess calmly asked for their help. 
My man and I were attacked by robbers. Only I escaped. I ask for your help. The king and queen were surprised by her noble voice and manner. The king gave her some dry clothes. The princess sat by the fire to warm herself. She told them and who she wasn't about the attack. The king and queen couldn't believe that a young princess was traveling all around. They thought that、uh, maybe she was the ring. Maybe this young woman was really a fortune hunter. She, they wanted to ask her more questions, but then the prince came in. When he saw the princess, he was immediately calm. He thought she was beautiful, not to tall and not to thin. The princess thought the prince was very handsome, not to、uh, thin and not to fat. The king and queen saw how their son looked at the young woman. He stared at her with such sweetness. The king and queen began to feel worried. Come, my dear, let me show you around the castle," said the king quickly. When they arrived, the prince turned to his mother and cried, "She is the one." What do you mean, my son? Asked the king. I want to marry her," said the prince. The king said and said to him, "Seriously, seriously, you must marry a princess. He, we know nothing about this young woman. We can't just believe her because she says." Her father is the king. The prince begged, "Mother, you must find a way to prove that she is a real princess. If she is not, I will die of a broken heart." The queen thought for a while. She went. She then went to a bedroom. The bedroom was for the young woman to sleep in. She carefully looked at the bed. She didn't want anyone watching, so she tucked it her way. When she was sure that no one was looking, she slid something under the mattress. After the princess saw everything in the palace, she was very tired. Smiling sweetly at the prince, she said good night and went to her room. The room was fiery, and he, he and the bed looked cold and warm. The princess quickly climbed into bed, but then find, but then, but then, and she read. Down, she felt something poking her. I can't sleep, she said. Wherever I run, I can't get comfortable. And she stayed awake all night. Early in the morning, she went down to breakfast. She looked more tired than the night before. The queen looked at her su- suspiciously. Did you sleep well, my dear? She asked. Oh, terribly! Said the princess. A terrible lump in the bed kept me awake. Oh, I'm so sorry. I will see to it right away. Promised the queen. During the day, the princess felt better. She even went riding with the prince. They felt so happy together. They hardly needed to speak. They knew what 
the other was thinking just by looking at each other. They were a perfect couple. That evening, the young man was sure he was in love with the princess. He was anxious to know was she a princess or wasn't she. So, can you prove that our guest is really a princess? He asked his mother. She is definitely from a good family, said his mother. But I am still not sure that she is. A、uh, princess, wait a little longer. Night came, and the princess went to her bedroom. She found that the queen had kindly put extra mattresses on her bed. I am sure to sleep well tonight. She thought. She quickly climbed. Into bed, but once again, she was uncomfortable. Something was poking her. She called the servants, and they added first on mattress, then another and another. Finally. The servants use all the extra mattresses in the palace. The princess spent the night on top of seven mattresses, but she still couldn't get to sleep. When the princess did not come down to breakfast the next morning. The king, the queen, and the prince were worried. They went to her room. They found the poor princess on the floor with the seven mattresses all around her. The princess looked very unhappy and tired. The queen decided. She had enough proof. She put her hand under the bottom mattress, and she took out a pea. Only a princess can feel a pea through seven mattresses. She declared. The prince was delighted. The happy prince. Asked the princess to marry him. She agreed at once. The princess's parents pleased their marriage. The happy couple had a big, beautiful wedding. Everyone from both kingdoms came to celebrate. After the wedding, the prince. And princess kept the pea in a crystal case. Every time they looked at it, it reminded them of their first met meeting. From then on, the picky prince and princess lived happily ever after. <laughs>